My name's Ekel O'Harrod, and this is the Future of Fiction podcast. That's right. Every two weeks, we do an hour and a half of deep dive with authors who have their elbows deep in AI. So what are we doing today, ladies and gentlemen? Well, we are joined today by two of the most guruish gurus that you could come across. They live over at the Future Fiction Academy. One of them is affectionately known as EAW, and the other one's name is Leland. But they are more than that. They are authors. They are people who are actually building things from scratch. They are people just like me who look at the uh, advent of AI and want to change the world with it. So what we're going to do right now is we are going to bring in Elizabeth Ann Warren and Leland, uh, I think it's Astra. I think it's Astra. Artra. And Artra, Artra. I was looking, I was like, is that an S or an R? Is that an S or an R? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you to the stage the dean of the Future Fiction Academy and guru master number one. How y'all doing? Hello. Great. Oh my goodness. So I refer to Elizabeth uh, because her name is long. I refer to Elizabeth as EAW. Uh, yeah. so and does almost, I mean, just about everybody does. I heard somebody else do it. I said, yeah, I'm going to start calling her that. Karen Brown, one of our other founders, she shortened it. She's from Detroit, so she, I'm just E-Dub. Oh, damn. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's not, that. See, I'm from Baltimore. I like I like shortened things, you know what I'm saying? Oh, That's no, I, I, love I live in Virginia Beach. So Yes, so, yeah, I learned how to surf in Virginia Beach. You know those cute little five those foot cute, tiny little things of yeah. sacred? I learned how to, that. well, it was the best place to learn, so I didn't yeah. like get slammed into rocks and stuff like that. So, I want to start this conversation out today by finding out about a, a little bit about both of you. I want to know, um, so how did you both get into publishing? You know, independent publishing, publishing, uh, and not all people have published, and uh, but I know that the two of you have uh, in the past. And so could you explain your beginnings of publishing, uh, especially in this whole advent of the Kindle age and stuff like that? Yeah, it's funny. Leland and I met uh, through my position back at Pseudorite, and we are actually similar um, years, publishing years. So I'll let him talk about his journey first, uh, if he wants to go first. But we both published, I think, what, 2011, Leland, or were you 2012? Uh, I was 2012. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to go ahead? <laughs> Oh, that's oh, right. That's right. Well, I, I'm not sure. So first, I'll make life better. I'll shorten my name down to Leland. There you go. So, uh, so yeah. So I, I I published in 2012, and I mean, like the the book that I published is I is, is this one right here behind me, uh, Thread Slivers. Um, wow. And uh, I got into I, I was a senior computer researcher at the University of Washington, uh, and I did a lot of research with machine learning and stuff like that. I did not write that with AI, so it's so so, so th that was all that was that that first book took me 20 years uh, to get into. But what I did was I just decided that I was I just got to a point where I was bored with TV. I wanted to do something else, so I decided you know I've always wanted to publish a book. Let's get down and do that. So I bought a whole bunch of books. As of there's some of them on the shelves behind me. Uh, right. on publishing, what it takes to actually write stories, because my friends had always told me that I should publish some of the stories I had. Um, and I just gave myself a really intense lesson from 2010 through 2012, which is when this whole self-publishing industry is really starting to kick off. Yeah, the bar. Uh, and, and I educated myself. I got to know like a lot of the initial movers and shakers. Uh, you know, we, we were like in small groups together and stuff like that while I worked on my books. And then I got them published out and uh, they, they hit it off well. So, you know, I just kept on going. Wow. And you, Elizabeth? So my first book is not on a TV screen. I'm not that cool. But I do still have one paperback <laughs> left of it uh, 
Yeah. October 5th, 2011. So it actually went live in September of 2011. So this was from that first batch of printing that I got. And um, similar to Leland, except that uh, I was married at the time and my ex-husband was military. So we moved every two to three years. And writing for a living was one of the professions that it turns out can pack up and move with you. So we moved to San Diego in 2007. I'm sorry. <laughs> Does it imagine that? Yeah. It's it's hard. It's hard for military spouses to have a career. Uh, this was, I mean, this was 2003. He and I met, so this was war on terror. This was a lot of. I mean, the military was very busy. He was usually gone for eight to ten months at a time if he was going on deployment and stuff. So, um, we moved out to San Diego. I was there for four months, and like on the way to San Diego, we got orders back to the East Coast, which was Charleston. Uh, so in San Diego in 2007, October. I clicked on a link that said, write, write articles for money. I was like, well, if this cost me anything. I'm not going to do it. It did not. It was actually the originally called associated content, which later became Yahoo contributor network. So for oh, a while there, I was an SEO article writer uh, by accident, actually. Uh, so I did that for about three or four years. And then um, Josh was like, you should write a book. And I went, okay, challenge accepted. And I researched all these things and I'm like getting books from the seventies out of the library. Cause that's what Monk's corner, South Carolina's little library had. It was like Monk's corner, it, South Carolina. Yep. <laughs> it was given advice, like send a Polaroid of yourself to the agent paper clips <laughs> to your proposal. Yeah. I'm like, this is madness. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that's what the library had on instructions on how to publish. It was, <laughs> Yeah, put a Polaroid. Like the, I mean, this was two thousand and seven. Or no, we were in San Diego, or we were in Charleston in two thousand eight. So it was like two thousand nine, two thousand ten, and that's what the library, the resources had. They, oh. they were still giving that instructions out back then. Oh my gosh! So how far have we come? Really far in twenty years. Uh, the and internet. So I had I had my daughter Caitlin in 09. and two thousand ten. I'm listening. I'm reading. And listening kind of like to a talk. These are early days of YouTube. Uh, you know Joe Conrath? Very big early indie. Um, no. Okay. So he was a really big name who walked away from publishing, uh, big publishing contracts and went indie, full indie. Shaken, not stirred. Whiskey sour. See, whiskey sour. I can remember like his thrillers and such. Oh, uh, I see. I see. And then uh, he was doing a, a conversation with, I think it's Barry Eisler is the name, but it was a big news that he, Barry had walked away from a six figure contract. This is a decade and a half ago. And you can still find this on the internet. It's called be the monkey, not the frog. And that reference uh, monkeys use frogs in the zoo for personal pleasure. So they were talking about the history. <laughs> <laughs> look, I had to go look at the video. I'm oh, telling no, you. No, 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 no. You don't understand the reluctance on your face to say that phrase was so awesome. I'm just <laughs> trying to make it like, you know, everyone laughs, but nobody's grossed out. But yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's a long history, honestly, of Trad Pub, like really taking advantage of authors. Harlequin, for example, had a contract once upon a time that paid authors 2% on their ebooks through oh, some yeah. fancy finagling accounting with subsidiary uh companies and stuff so there's a long history of corporations and stuff just screwing over the author so when kdp came out and they were offering they actually originally were not offering 70 percent. apple books when they offered 70 percent, kdp had to match they originally was only you could get 35 percent. yeah so when they were offering 70 percent off of gross everyone was like okay um newer uh more established authors were having to come into this and like learn all these new skills. But as I'm folding laundry and I'm listening and I'm going, I know how to make a website. I know how to market online. I've been marketing articles and stuff like this. So that's when I sat down and wrote cancel. And this little puppy got to number two in the free store back in 2012. I would have been number one, but Les Mis had came out as a movie. And so that was number one, but <laughs> it had a book bub and everything. It had gotten to number 27 in a previous advertising thing. So I figured out like, I know how to advertise. I know how to do this. All and right. Then so I just in case anybody okay. doesn't understand what a book bub is uh, in the world of uh, Kindle and, and self-publishing and stuff like that, to get a book bub would mean that you get advertisement, like free advertisement to literally 
thousands and thousands of people in a specific list. And that mm -hmm. list of people almost makes everybody pop. Every at least as an independent, yeah, almost and everyone you you see significant changes. Bookbub is used by actual the trade by by the actual publishers themselves too. And uh, if you do get a chance to get a Bookbub, because uh, they're very selective, um, that they, they all you do is just submit your book, and then they decide if they if if you if you're uh, worthy of being in their list, and if you are, uh, you pay them. They they, they say okay, you're gonna go. You you've got you're going to be released on this date. So you just have to plan around that date. Um, and they have hundreds of thousands of people in, in very tight genre niches. So when you go, when your book bub uh, goes out, you get hit. I mean, you, you get sales. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a major spike. But so, the way that they, oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. no, 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 actually I wanted you to. The way they grew those lists was not in like it wasn't new innovation or anything. I got to watch it firsthand. I can remember a time before BookBub existed. They used yes. to do these advertorials. So mm. people will remember these are like they're ads, but they read like a blog post and it was called the book reviewer or something. And it would pop up on your front page of your Yahoo News or something like that. And you click on it and it would be like this press release about readers are finding new sales and stuff like that. And many of them are using the service BookBub to find free and discounted books. And then it would just be a click at the bottom to join their mailing list. That was it. That's how they, I, they did it. I actually made years. those. I, I, I made it. Yeah. I made a number of those for uh, <clears throat> MySpace, <laughs> Yahoo, Facebook. Yep. Facebook? Facebook, yeah. Everybody, even like this. Oh, wow. My first um, time ever advertising on Facebook, I had a penny a click on my video ads. And it was just, it was a, you deserve a date with Mr. Darcy. Yes, you do. And the book cover. And I, oh, I miss those days of Facebook advertising. Yeah, that was oh back when Facebook God. was affordable. Yeah. Well, I mean, they are a juggernaut now. And for some reason, they, uh, poof, uh, VR went out of the window. And now but they're back to what they <laughs> Meta is keeping Llama, we're talking, tying this to AI. Meta is keeping Llama open source. And a lot of the open source models are being based off of Llama. So I think they're playing kind of a different long game than what OpenAI and Anthropic is doing. And it's kind of fascinating to watch. Okay, now well, you did it. You gave me the <laughs> perfect transition to what we are really here about. All yeah. right, so you need to, we, all right, we're going to start with Leland. Leland? How and why do you, all right, could you at least explain in your explanation of your experience with artificial intelligence and writing and your introduction to it? I would also like to know why you are positive about it. What is it about artificial intelligence that has really changed the way that you get into the way you write? So uh, Leland, take it away. <laughs> All right. Well, so let me see if I can let me see if I can keep this in under 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've been doing machine learning for uh, two decades now. Uh, I was doing machine learning back in the in the 2000, uh, you know, 1998, 1999 at the University of Washington. I never really tried to apply that to like my fiction writing or something like that. But I was in a number of authors groups and author support groups. And what happens is, is in these groups, one or two authors get some success, the rest get jealous, the group breaks up and goes away, and then you yep. end up kind of alone. So as a writer, you're generally alone in a room typing, wishing to high heaven you had somebody you could talk to, to bounce ideas off of and to, to be able to to just listen to what they're doing and maybe get their aspired because you know the the best the best writers are also the most prolific or the most uh, ravenous readers and so you 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 need to be feel, filling your imagination and so what happened is is all the writing groups that I was in broke up and and, and kind of washed away uh, a number of years ago and. I didn't, I couldn't find anybody else who was actually in my space doing my thing that, that wanted to kind of geek out with me over science fiction or the fantasy stuff that I was doing. Um, and then about a year and a half ago, I, I, I really, I really lost, kind of lost track of time. Maybe, maybe just, just a little over a year ago, uh, is when some of these large language models started coming out and there were some possibilities. They, uh, there used to be a, this, this concept of open AI when they, when you can just kind of 
feet of something and it would just blast words at you because it's essentially a word slot machine and what i i started poking at it a little bit and i'm like well this is kind of interesting because one of the one of the things that happens is is like i'm writing like five or i have i have ideas for five or six series i've got i got i got ideas for even more and when i have this thing it's like i'll be writing and i'm like oh geez you know hold on i i need i need to know like what kind of weapons would be used in the 1930s in london by by you know by a low level criminal what what kind of spy gadgets actually exist and so it's like i was like uh, so it's like i need to ask questions like well you know what's a list of this what's a list of that uh give me some ideas for this one or or here's a scenario or something like that or <laughs> or or what's like like i'm in a locked room and and what's some possible ways to break out right i mean just 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 general ideas and th these were the ideas that i would bounce off of other writers um somewhere around the end of uh, 2022 i'm losing track of my uh, of time now um is when the is when uh chat gpt dropped uh a lot of other stuff came out sudo right came out uh and i was because i was already in that space for work um because I, we use machine learning for all kinds of interesting things at work um i saw the announcements for this i was like well this is kind of cool so i just kind of logged in i'm like oh look they're they're offering free access so i got free access and i like like i was i think the first week that after that when when that stuff when i got access to that stuff i didn't sleep because i was just like oh try this try that oh let's go here let's go there i mean it, it still wasn't it wasn't good but it's like i'm like oh my goodness like 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 it was just like it was like sparklers and 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 uh fireworks going off in my mind just this that this that this yeah. that all right this, all right this. uh raise your hand raise your hand if it happened to you too <laughs> i think i still have a sleep debt from ai since december I, one yeah there was a moment i just i my wife was like uh you really should go to bed <laughs> I mean, you should Two you should you... founders, Christine Breen and Karen Brown and I, we call ourselves the prompting queens. We'd be on till three, four o'clock in the morning just hammering with oh my uh, god ground and chat GPT. You know, Marigold, we... Marigold and CC do the same thing. Yeah. Everybody Marigold does. Marigold has joined FFA. Uh she just joined us yesterday and she's been working on some prompting for Rexy. So sorry, I just had to tell you. Like, no, I'm no, excited. it's fantastic. Wait, 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 wait. So Marigold is gonna be is she gonna be teaching? Yes, she yes. is on the 20th. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, y'all. Okay. Um, there are people out there. There are these people that we just love teaching, mm -hmm. and they have gen the the generosity of their teaching. Very much like EAW. Very much yeah. like Leland. I think they, we all the have a spirit. Yeah. Of the collaboration. There's room for all of us at the table. I mean, like we kind of came out the same time as you and our names are similar, but like yep. there was no beef or anything like that. We nope, I, even, I remember I remember we pigged each other, but you know what happened, y'all? We both went on the artificial intelligence probably within like a two week period, right? Yeah. And uh I had my uh my channel had been like there and waiting for a while because I did that thing like early on mm -hmm. and I hadn't really posted anything. And then I started posting and literally I think it was within a, a few days that you had started posting too. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Oh, it's almost like my name. Ooh, maybe I'll get more subscribers because <laughs> people will bounce back and forth. You know what I yeah. mean? That sort of thing. Um, y'all handle it. They're going to confuse us. So you have Triple F and we are FFA yep. and yep. Future Fiction Factory, Future Fiction Academy. It's yep. all good. Yep. It's and all, uh, all about I, future I have fiction, right? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've put your logo and the Nerdy Novelist logo up at the same time telling people, look, Yep. Uh, I'm going to explain something to you, and then you are going to go over to these other places so that you can get a deep dive. And this will, in turn, give you the ability to think on your own. This yeah. is my yes. biggest thing about prompting is independent thought. And this is, you know, I'm, I've been thinking about doing a video on dictation and prompting <gasps> because there is a... We have an, one that came out that I shared. And, uh, and, and speaking of nerdy novelist, he's also a member of the FFA as well. He's a student of the FFA. Often a lot of his uh, prompts and stuff 
if you join the FFA, you're going to go, well, this looks a little familiar, but he'll put his own twist on the end and everything like that. So um, yes, he will. Yes, he will. I love that we're all just working together and we're trying to help every author out there because all of us are going to reach different authors. Because my big concern is these corporations are going to find ways to click a button and get some really mediocre crap to put out there. And they're not going to share that technology with us. No, they're not. They're not. If we do not develop the stuff in the, in, uh, in the open, uh, mm-hmm. corporations, corporations do what corporations do. Yeah. It's what they're supposed to do, actually. To be honest with you, they're supposed yeah. to look out for the fiduciary interests of their shareholders. Yep. They don't really care about you. No, they not us. I mean, they care I mean, about the shareholders. Back in, back in 2014, I made a whole series of videos once I learned how the publishing and the you know the the, the traditional publishing industry and the and the indie publishing uh, growing uh, group was working. I made some videos and posted them up on my YouTube channel, which actually walked through with diagrams and stuff like that. This is why publishing can only pay a certain percentage. This is all the stuff that they're doing. This is their business. So it's like they have to be in business to make a profit. Um, and I, that, I put all those videos out to explain why I chose to go indie. Independent. Right? Yeah. On top of that, publishers, and we teach this in the FFA, They do a slate of books and they do not expect all of those books to be bestsellers. They do not expect all of those books to actually make a profit. They purposely plan that out of, say, 10 books, so many books are not going to earn out. So many books will earn out. And then one or two will will go gangbusters and will go super big. That's their model. There is no secret of publishing. If there was a way to publish a book and know absolutely for sure that it's going to just take off and be profitable, none of us would have jobs because they would they would just do it nonstop. So publishing is actually risk. It's very risky. And so the way that they mitigate that risk is by going, okay, we publish 100 titles a year. We know XYZ, this big name, Nora Roberts, Stephen King, they're going to carry the banner for the for the for the majority of the revenue that we need this year. The midlisters will pick this up and we're going to have some books that fail. Right. Uh, And in the independent author's mind, they are just looking at their own book and the best way to market it. They're not trying to think of the conglomeration of the whole market and what is what could that do to affect their entire output for the year, which is billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars. We're just worried about ourselves and maybe 50, 60, 80 thousand dollars a year. You know, we're trying Uh, to that actually. (laughs) The majority of them make less than twenty five thousand dollars a year. Yeah, yeah, and I I just think that uh, the the idea that you can publish and be uh, independent yourself is so empowering. But then you add artificial intelligence on top of it, and there are things that an individual can do. I, I don't know if you have uh, seen any of my uh, latest videos, but I just put out a video talking about what actually uh elizabeth uh was one of my gurus that i ran this uh idea behind Mm -hmm. uh across uh um uh past uh but uh the idea that you could create a writer's room and you know uh, i was thinking you had a question about that whole idea of creating uh 15 uh things and consistency and stuff like that what if you had custom instructions for everybody right everyone who is working on that project they you have a separate document that you give to all of your writers right and that programs their ais to do exactly what you and how you want the style to happen all of the special instructions in the background in order for it to respond correctly i was thinking to myself that would be really cool like if you um could automate the voice of yeah. what you're doing in order so, to have a consistency. And then you would do less editing as the showrunner. You know what I mean? We have um, a business curriculum that's starting up with the FFA inside of it. It's it's old business curriculum that I was teaching, but I've co-opted it with AI and we're modeling it off of the Stratemeyer syndicate. So you've never heard of this Stratemeyer syndicate. They did all the Nancy drew books, the Bobsy twins and the Hardy boys. So what you're talking about doing has actually already been done before. And so there's templates and basic like blueprints of how to run a business like that in the sense that you have specific instructions that would be given to the authors. They had to follow a template. Chapter six had to be when clue one is in chapter 10 had to be when like the big bad was caught. 
they had a template, a formula, they had to go. But Nancy Drew was actually written by a bunch of different authors. It was not written by just one. Same, Same thing with the Hardy Boys. Boys. So with the Hardy Boys. Yeah, so we call it Club Strat. And we are all basically developing our own individual Stratemeyer syndicates because with AI, you are the showrunner. And with Rexy being able to loop commands and loop uh, prompts and things like that, I'm at the ability now that I can generate 19,000 words in less than an hour with AI. And it's I, pretty consistent narrative logic. Can I explain to you <laughs> on that live stream this weekend, I have been working with Playground, you know, yeah. you, we're, we're doing all of the stuff with the super prompts. And I was trying to Bedroom do prompt, a combination yes. of the super prompt with Playground and uh, a couple of outside tools. Yep. And I literally generated uh, so fast um, 5,000 word, a 5,000 word uh, chapter. Absolutely. It was ridiculous. And it was in 3.5, uh, 16K. Yep. Uh, turbo. It was so, so fast, so like compelling. It did go off the rails because I had the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> you bring that temperature down to 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8. Oh, or, oh, move up to one, or move the temperature up to 1.8 and you and, and play with the top P. I have a I have a lab on that last night. He just did a lab last night on the hyper parameters. And we had a student play with that and he, they went max and they got a sentient potato. They were trying to write something completely different, like Contemporary romance or whatever, and the AI gave them a potato. It was pretty a potato, a potato, like a potato. like a potato. A potato. Have you seen um so everywhere everything everywhere all at once? Yes. yes. Okay. So, so imagine, yeah, like the the bagel or the the, the, the rocks, the two yeah. rocks, just having a yeah. conversation with the googly eyes, you know. Uh, but imagine uh coming to a project like everything everywhere all at once and you've already got all of these great ideas but you just want a little bit more to tie the whole thing together and though ai is great for mm -hmm. themes and uh making sure that you're not going off the rails when you're deciding to do something i have always thought to myself that there is no joy that is better than when you get the prompt right and you prompt it and you get the thing and you read it and you read it out loud. If you, you know, I'll do that on my live stream. I yeah. will read it out loud. And you know, I'm an actor. So mm -hmm. I have these like abilities to actually read it and have characters and stuff. And it's, it, it shows that it's compelling when yeah. I put, character to it and really actually try to act the stuff out i go okay this works this is actually a thing you know it's super writing, exciting writing becomes an interactive reading experience it, it, <laughs> for me at least if i'm writing with ai i'm like i don't know what it's gonna do next oh i like that or oh i don't like that but let me twist it like this and so it's like writing with a junior co-writer that's never upset if you don't use their stuff is always ready to work you don't have to give it any coffee or very little money if you're actually using like playground. I'm sure you've been excited about the bills you've been getting out of playground with 16 K. If you've looked I, at how I, much it costs, it's like pennies. I, of I'm, a penny. I'm almost, I, I am. I'm so close to canceling my $20 uh, chat, but I like the interface and yeah. the, and I, I can, I know how to build in the yeah. chat. So it's very difficult to let it go. I would uh, keep chat. Uh, for a little while longer, I have access to a tool I can't talk about yet that's coming. Um, I'm in the alpha for that. And what I can say is that it can read images. So you just put up an image and it can completely translate the image uh, to text and things like that. So and and that's you might ask yourself, why would that be useful for writing fiction? Uh, we'll demonstrate it when we can talk about it. Yeah, but <laughs> just, all, just the things that we can say, I can say is like, if you put up a picture of like, say a setting, now you could say, hey, I need you to write this scene with this setting. And so then your characters are actually moving around the furniture and stuff that's in that setting. You talk about being a showrunner, you're really gonna be able to step into being a creative director with the new models that are coming uh, and what they're able to do between video and text and uh, images. You've seen the, um, well, have you seen, you've obviously seen things like Runway and yeah, uh, some of the Big other- <laughs> Right, and all of the other um, 
video extrapolation. I yep. mean, there there's some recent stuff that Matt Wolf has been putting out that shows uh, very consistent. Like, all right, so Corridor Digital had to do an entire workflow to get to the point where things weren't flickering around, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in their rock, paper, scissors video, which is basically broke the internet for half a day. <laughs> and it, it really did. It, 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 it made a lot of people mad because mm -hmm. they used copyrighted material to like model their stuff, but they were just using it as an example. The part that nobody seemed to have gotten, but uh, because they made money on it, apparently that makes it bad. <laughs> it, just, because uh, it it, it depends. So fair use is a very complicated legal doctrine. It has yeah. to do with a lot to do with like what if their product was very similar to the copyrighted, if it would take audience away from the copyright. But all of that would be handled in a court of law. Not it's not it's right. not illegal to violate copyright. You're just going to get sued and have to pay damages. Right. And the way they did it, the way they did it, it had nothing to do with the actual property, intellectual property from before. It was just the style of yes. the of the video and that's the part that nobody i i, I don't know if you can't okay now, right ideas let, all right so here here we're gonna have this discussion for half of a second <laughs> all right um all right y'all we'll tie in with how i came to ai all right so here's the question here's the question the question is when a large language model is spitting out words actual words right mm -hmm. I know the science. Everybody doesn't know the science. They look at it and they all seem to believe that it is taking words that it saw and taking those same words and putting them in context with whatever you're asking <laughs> it to do. That is not how it works. Yeah. I keep trying to explain that to people, but there's actually um precedent for this um there's um <laughs> a google actual google lawsuit when they mm -hmm. were scanning in books and yes. this scanning in books one basically throws everything out the window it's the there's same multiple, one. there's multiple cases that are, are establishing precedent i think the big thing is that people don't understand people are used to the old ways of search we're used to keyword search and we understand databases those of us who are laymen we understand what a database is you store all the information you go ex you go extract that information i know we're familiar with um you know uh what what was the previous word i said before database uh, oh keyword search Keyword search. Okay. So right. if we have a bunch of images on stock photo sites or whatever, we're going to, you know, there's a picture of some apples and some oranges and bananas. We're going to tag it fruit. We're going to tag it apples. We're going to tag it, or tag it orange, yellow, red. We're going to throw all the tags on it. And it's just going to be a jumbled mess of a box with items with tags on them. And when you go to search it, you're going to say like, I want fruit. And it's going to give you a whole array of a bunch of fruit. It's not really efficient it's at all. And so a lot of the LLM technology actually came about with advances in what's called vector search. Um, and Leland, did you want to explain it? Or you want me to do my explanation? No, do your box thing. It's perfect. I'll do my box thing. And actually, I have a box. It's almost like I was prepared for this. <laughs> I love that. a real box today. I have a box now. It's a bigger box. Me. Bought my box. Okay. So Better illustration. Back to when we would just throw all the things in the box, and then we would just like pull out them. A handful at a time and you'd see this on keyword search you know how it'll say like 25 results per page or 50 results per page and you're just right. going through the whole list it's basically like a big toy box or something that you're just pulling stuff out and like do you want this one what about this one what about this one it's really inefficient so we're going to do a vector search on that same thing with fruit fruit and vegetables are the example i give so let's pretend this box and it's a three-dimensional box let's pretend we're going to throw broccoli apple orange and bananas inside this box. And I'm gonna decide to put my vegetables on the bottom of the box and my fruit are going to live on the top of the box. Okay, so icky vegetables at the bottom, fruits up at the top. So somewhere okay. in this space, my apple, my orange and my banana are floating in the middle. Now okay. I can go, okay, how about from side to side, let's do acidity. Let's go, this side is really acidic and this side is more basic. So now you can imagine that orange is going to start moving over to the acidic, or I think this side I said acidic, moving over to the acidic side. 
and the banana is going to move over to the basic side and the apple is going to be closer to the acidic side, right? Still, is this a illustration of weights? Vector search. This is how the LLMs actually work. Each individual token has a location inside a, a imaginary box, but it's not three dimensions. It's like infinite thousands, dimensions. Thousands and thousands right. of dimensions. So right. now we have one more dimension that we can categorize this fruit. The front of the box and the back of the box. Let's say the front of the box grows close to the equator. The back of the box doesn't. So now my orange that's acidic, it's going to move up closer to the equator. My banana that's basic is going to move up towards the front. And my apple that doesn't grow close to the equator is going to move back. And now these three pieces of fruit are living in the top of my box in different locations. And the result of that is the computer knows the location of what the concept of banana is. And around banana, it's going to have other fruit that's similar to like a banana. Same thing with orange. Now tangerine's going to live over here and pineapple is going to live over here somewhere because it's 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 close to it in location on those different criteria. It's completely different than tagging it. It's the information yep. actually living in a space uh, where they're able to understand how it's related to other things. And they're doing that with pieces of words. That's what a token is. So when I show the tokenizer, and I have a couple of labs on this on our YouTube channel showing this, if you go to the OpenAI tokenizer, and you type in some words and you get the tokens. There's a little bottom at the bottom that says token IDs. Go to that. It shows you the numbers of the tokens. But those aren't even the numbers that they're using. Those numbers correlate to a specific address that's in the training set of where that token lives and where it lives around other tokens that are like it. For example, a period is number 13. An open quotation mark is um, number zero. And an exclamation point is zero. So you can, or is one. So you can understand that a punctuation all lives kind of close to each other in that imaginary box. That's like, I say it's like a galaxy of stars. That's how complicated the different relationships are that they can map Jeez now. Jeez Louise. And, and so I mean, what, what, this, what this is called in, in, in the computer language world is, is clustering. So this is a, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just a massive clustered database of words. So this is, this is where this, this is like the, the the synonym dictionary that every author wishes they had. They're like, I have this word and I want to find other words that are like it, but not actually synonyms for it. Right. So like with with a synonym, with, with, with a thesaurus, you're only seeing the words that are are, are actually the same you know, meaning, same meaning. One but dimension. You want, you want the words around it. And what you really want is you really want a phrase and you want to do a search for other phrases that are kind of associated to that in some vector or some direction. Like I want to find out all the words, all the, all the things that someone might say if they were angry at their boyfriend. Right. Or <laughs> I want to find out all the words someone would say if they were raised in New York. Uh, uh, in Hell's Kitchen, and 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 they had a really bad encounter with the police when they were young, yep. right? So uh... it's like, show me, show me what these people would use for curses. Show me, you know, like like like, like it, it's it, this is where you have all of these vectors, and that's what's in the, the the training set that has been loaded into these large language models, and that's what you're really playing with. So what it's doing is it's it's taking what you're asking for. And what you're at, and all it's doing is really breaking that down into tokens and then going to where those tokens are in the in, in its vector thing and then kind of looking at the stuff around it and then going, okay, well, if I have this, then it's likely that it's, it's like 10% that I'll see that and 5% I'll see this. I'll roll some dice, I'll pick the 5% one. Yeah. And, then, and remember, it's doing this, and remember, it's it's literally doing this in like less than a second in a lot of uh, well, instances. Doing it for each individual token. So each individual token is a is a unique calculation. So it's it's an individual calculation at the token level each time that that it's calculating out. Yeah. So for for every partial word that is a token that it's generating, it's going. I have these three tokens. Now what's the next likely possibility? Now I randomly pick. Okay. Now I have four tokens. What's the next likely token from those four tokens? Now I randomly pick. Now I have five tokens, and so when you're doing this, when you're when, when you're asking for that, it, it's not doing it by words. It's not doing it by sentences. It is not. It, there is no way in on the on the living earth that it could be plagiarizing because it's not copying and pasting. It is literally rolling dice 
walking through associations. Based on your prompt. So the biggest way you control this is your prompt. So when you give a prompt, that is the criteria that you are for the, the, the formula for the calculation that the AI needs to calculate. So basically whatever's in your prompt. And that's why describe a rose bed is a very simple prompt. Describe a rose bed for a Regency romance novel that has been neglected since the mother died. It's a more complicated prompt. You can understand that those are going to give you very different results because you've given it different data to calculate from. So I've given it more. If you need to think in keywords, you can, but there are no more keywords. Keywords are dead. It's now all tokens. And so that's where it's doing those calculations. So if it's writing 100 words for you, that was 100 individual calculations, roughly. Um, actually, it, it's more it's like 120, 125, oh, but yeah. So, yeah. so the, and the other thing is, 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 is this is the hard, this is the hardest thing. These machine learning networks and cluster systems have been very specifically generated to produce grammatically correct structures because the goal was to pass the Turing tests. The goal right. was to fool a human into thinking that another human was generated. Was on the other curtain. side of whatever it is. Was on the other side of the was on the other side of the curtain, right? So these models have been trained to do that. Now they're not thinking, they're not contemplating they're not going oh you know i'm going to say these words they are literally just following the clusters around these vector searches figuring out what other connections that are are, are next and with with the percentage chance and then randomly picking one there's no thought behind that which is why when you're using these models these these that are generating this stuff you have to be, you have to remain in the main seat. You are the director of the action. You are the producer. You are the senior writer because you have to insert your capability to actually go. That doesn't make any sense. Or I would do this differently. And sometimes, is, um, Ikello, no, could I ask you about your ahead. super prompt? When you've run it, sometimes you said it went off the rails, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So did you change your prompt or did you just run it again? I just ran it again. Exactly. I, because you could have just gotten yeah. a bad dice roll. And so a lot of times new people working with AI, they get frustrated if they run a prompt and they think, oh, I've got to fix the prompt. The prompt's broken. Run that puppy two or three times before you decide it's broken. It's possible you just got a bad dice roll on that fifth token and it went off the rails. I was writing one story. Everything was cool. Claude was doing great. I got to chapter five <laughs> and my female character suddenly turned into a heroin addict. And I was like, wait, what? She hasn't had, like, they've already had sex twice in this book, and just now he's noticing track marks on the inside of her elbow, and it's because it picked one token, because I said there should be a talk about crime, but it meant to be his background, it just got confused. Um, it picked one bad token, and once it picked one bad token of, like, track, then it had to go mark, and then heroin, and we just, we went, we went downhill quickly. You know, Mike, I, it, I, it was just following the associations. Yes, I love, um... Uh, we've all had this conversation out loud uh, in public before. The conversation that uh, all language models are not the same. They just yeah. aren't. Um, uh, Chat GPT has a certain personality to it. Mm -hmm. And that is a true way to categorize what we are experiencing is personalities. The personality of Claude is a little bit of a liar little bit of a liar uh but but super rich with the ideas and the quality of prose that you're asking it to actually write it, it will it will kind of keep going with the right prose yep. and completely write something completely different but it's, it'll it's substitute a, your instructions with its own because it's like no i'm gonna write this story instead <laughs> now has anybody played with llama or llama too? Uh, and uh, have you downloaded it, put it, uh, loaded it up on either your Mac or your PC and you're running it and in a very, very cold room somewhere so that it doesn't overheat your whole house? I don't. I, uh, <laughs> I actually like to use cloud based. I like Hugging Face Chat. It's really great for testing out different models. Um, open Router AI is also really great to get access to different open source models, especially the not safe for work models, which right. Um, I'm really tired of Claude and ChatGPT telling me if I'm doing a mafia romance. Have you thought about not glorifying the mafia? Maybe you should write an ethical romance instead. And it's like, no. Yeah. 
that, that's the fun part. And the other thing is, is I, I have I demonstrated, I've demonstrated multiple times. You can make GPT-3.5 sound and generate uh, text that is almost indistinguishable from Claude. You can get the same type of results if you play with the, if you play with the the, the, the dials and, and, and sliders that they give you. Um, it, it makes. I'm what? sorry, oh, I don't have access to that. I wish I did. <laughs> you do in Playground. You do have access to the sliders and stuff in Playground. Yes. Oh no, no, I oh. thought you were talking about Claude. Uh, no. Well, no so, you, so if if you if, so I'll just tell you. So if you if you go to Playground and you work with ChatGPT three five sixteen K or GPT four, and you turn the temperature up to one point eight or one point nine, which is generally where most people say don't go, but then you also turn the top P down to uh, 0. 0.6, it writes like Claude. Wait, you guys brought down the P to 60%? Yeah. So it's only considering the top 60% of results. It's rejecting. No, it's only considering the top 40% of the results. The top 40% of results. I'm sorry, I did the math backwards. So what you're doing is when it when it considers all of those words, it's not considering like the low the low statistical results. It cuts right. out it's, the heroin addicts. It's, it's dropping the weirdness factor out but yep. because you have temperature turned way the heck up, it's still going to pick the lower choice of what's available. So that forces you to go into that middle, that middle, that middle band. Yes. All right. Oh, so cool. top P, lower yep. it down. Zero, put, it, put it to 0. 0.6 and put your temperature up to 1.8 and give ChatGPT4 something to talk about. It'll, it, it'll talk just like Claude. And uh, not 1.8? But zero one point one point eight for temperature. Ooh, Maybe we the way heck to up. Oh my gosh! Okay, I, I put it up, and now I'm going to. Uh, well, you know what? Share your screen. <laughs> I was just thinking. <laughs> I'm like doing this over here, and everybody's like, "He's like, all yeah, like, dude, dude. Do, do. All right, let me see. Let me see. Uh, present." Um, by the way, this is what we do in the Future Fiction Academy. This is what a lab is. Labs, is we, yep. do. we do this eight times a week. And we play. And yeah, and you, if you've had any opportunity to see any of their videos from their excerpts, mm -hmm. it's it's so much fun. It is so much fun. All right, I am on. One of my favorite labs that we did was with Code Interpreter when that dropped and I showed how you could upload literally a fake medical examiner's report and a fake police report and get a thriller novel. And it started writing from the character point of view of a serial killer and stuff because it had the context. Like you just upload files to Code Interpreter. Now I think it's called it. They're rebranding it as advanced data analysis on uh, GPT-4. There we go. All right. So, so your temperature is still low. Your, your temperature is at 0.77. So yeah, I actually, up. this one, I'm going to, um, one. yep, I'm going to re, oh my gosh, I hate that about. Uh, Playground, you can't have multiple instances. There we go. It will save yep. it for you. If you go to your little clock, you can reload those previous settings. So you can just go from where you left off. All right. So I'm going to um, start save. Mm -hmm. save untaint story and then i can do a new one right yeah how do i start over again just refresh your page and it'll go blank on you i did not that's oh there we go i was like i do this a lot in lab <laughs> it's still coming back why is it oh because it's loading your... it's loading your save so you could just manually delete and then don't save okay there we go so this is out and just, just delete this just to, just click the little minus button minus you know what let me do this i want to make sure i'm on the oh, okay i am sharing correctly yeah, i just you got to... it <laughs> all right um it is a little hard to read you may want to zoom in oh it's actually it's just because it's so wide it's okay yeah okay so first that's emptied and then i'm going to select all and delete and select all, delete, and we will zoom out. Now, um, so get, get rid of gonna... the assistance message. So just hit the minus on the far uh, right. Far right. Yeah. 
slide up. There you go. Click yeah. that there. Now in the users, just type in, just type in to the users, describe, de, uh, describe a rose bed. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. It's actually be right, better to run in um, legacy completion no. because you could turn on the um, showing. Well, the okay, so if you want, yeah, if you want to do that, that's okay. We'll we'll do it with that lab. Don't worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but uh, so, so this is a great example, everybody, of the like literally the fiddling around that we do. We we this mm -hmm. is everybody. If you all right, <laughs> if if you are not spending like quality time thinking uh imaginatively about the things that could happen in here it, it, then you are you're you're missing out and you're doing yourself a disservice mm -hmm. all right so a rose bed is a garden area specifically dedicated to growing roses it is typically filled with rich well-drained soil often amended with compost or other organic matter to provide the nutrients uh, the nutrients roses need to thrive. Wow. The roses are usually painted with plenty of space. Uh, yeah, planted with pen, uh, plenty of space between each one to allow for good circulation and prevent the spread of diseases. Uh, so what do y'all think? I it's think what? it's not not as so, clinical as it usually is but so, so so hit the minus so 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 remove the assistant output and i just paste it into our private chat in this stream yard thingy a slight modification to to your user prompt so it's more fiction based yep so get rid of this one or this one yeah i'll get rid uh, of that one that one okay there we go and then yeah. grab 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 the prompt that i just gave you which is describe a rose bed where is it from private, the private, yeah, private from the chat room. there we go from the first person point of view of a herbalist uh, in a science fiction novel based in Victorian times using steam based technology and intricate clockwork. AKA steampunk. Steampunk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jinx you snap. Over <laughs> oh, snap. Okay. Um, I'm just to throw that in there. Now that we've seen the first version, now we're going to see the second version now go ahead and hit yeah so let me see uh temperature te yeah go ahead yep everything's right right yep, yep. and boom go, go gadget so you're telling me that this is actually uh giving us more of that clawed feel to it yeah you tell I mean, me i, you I can... all right here we go uh uh barry white boys here we go we can also compare it by running that same prompt in clawed.ai chat and we can compare the two I approach the rose bed with a sense of reverence, the steam from my mechanical respirator mingling with the morning dew. Ooh. The sun had just began oh. to rise. Got a sun, sorry. Got a sun, take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least the damn thing didn't just uh, automatically say Lyra for some weird reason. Yeah, dappled sun. We, we have a joke in the FFA, if it mentions the sun, you have to take a drink. Ooh. Man, y'all must get faded. Now we're drinking coffee. It's early in the morning. <laughs> All right. So the sun had just begun to rise, casting a soft golden glow over the Victorian style garden. The rose bed is uh, the rose bed, its heart and soul. Each bloom was a marvel of natural engineering. Petals spiraling out in an almost clockwork precision that never ceased to amaze me. The rose bed was an array of hues from the palest blush pink to the deepest crimson. Each blossom was a, de uh, was a delicate cog in the machine that was the garden, an intricate piece of the larger puzzle. Their sweet, intoxicating scent filled... Oh, my God! The, the, <laughs> the, perfume, the perfume distilled into vials of my lab each one more precious than the next. I bent down the joints of my mechanical suit, whirring softly, steam hissing as I moved, my gloved fingers, the fingertips embedded with delicate sensors, gentle, 
uh, gently traced the velvety petals of a particular, vi a particularly vibrant red rose. Oh my gosh, what the hell? So we're getting all the sensory detail that Claude likes to throw in, but you're getting it out of GPT-4, which is usually very light on the sensory details. It's so wait a minute. So you're platform. telling me I could build in the system, I could build a thing in the system to kind of build out what I want it to expound upon and then use the user uh, spot to refer, uh, to give it a prompt to build off of the the system information yes. yeah oh, 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 oh. your, your hyper parameters there they they control how the training set is being used you're giving more information to the ai your temperature setting controls how how abstract is the ai allowed to i'm going to say the t word cover your ears leland how abstract the ai is allowed to think or calculate how <laughs> so but I say think because it's the way that people understand it. So your temperature, but if you like, let's run this again and don't do your top P and you'll watch it goes off the freaking rails. We'll have squids and flying octopi and whatever. Oh, it, it, yeah, it'll be gone in half a second. It'll, it'll okay. be back to do. Okay, so I'm going to select all. Copies. Save it. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. This one was no, a no. little. This I'm one was. Way. I'm like, I'm a uh, dragon hoarder with words. I have to keep all the good words. I might use them later. She is. She's a major word hoarder. Yeah, yeah. You, you know that's gonna come back and bite you a little bit, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, that's actually, right. maybe it won't. Maybe it won't. Maybe you'll actually be able to have a large database, and then maybe you have a local version of Llama in your computer, and you could ask Llama to look up you're like i remember there was a moment in one of my scenes where this happened could you look up through these documents and find that scene you can you, you, do, that with, you can do that with lang chain and embeddings and um rexy's launching so rexy is the tool that we're all working on and everything like that but my hope is this winter i'll have adversarial agents going where there's prompting We've already done a little bit of experimentation with that in the FFA last last month with um, different personas in the system box. But this idea of you have one AI persona's job is to edit or check writing against a set of criteria, different AI persona writing it, and they're basically they're going back and forth until they're until the adversarial agent's happy with the output. And then you so you're basically forcing the AI to do a lot of the validation to save you time. Woohoo! What? It's coming. All right. So uh, you, look, look what you did again. She <laughs> made another natural transition, ladies. I'm and not the only one for adversarial agents, but real fast, just because I want the audience to see, do you mind deleting the assistant and just letting the temperature be high and put the top P at one so that you could see why people have said, don't put the temperature up high because without All right. that top P parameter, it will run amok. Okay, so we're going to take P back All up the way to up. 1. Yep. And we're going to keep that at 1. Setting. Leave, just leave now, it there, yeah. I yep. will have to, I do have to say that I had this at like 1.4 and it was starting to just straight cold gobbledygook me. Yep. You know what I mean? Like Oh, like it won't take it, long now. Like yep. I was on a live stream and literally everybody in the uh, chat went, "Oh my god, you broke it." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it was All right, y'all ready? We're ready. Here and we here we go. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I want to hear you try to read that, Ecolo. Here we go. <laughs> At least like the two sentences. Far. I see a rock. Palm wart. Palm, far, far palm wart. Circle progressed the irresistible blasphemy of the homogenous McCancron. <laughs> Ike, resulting quaint. Democrat, Democrats? Ranged, stern. Cats, casts, fall, drop, games. Harsh, dumping. <laughs> Customs, wrist, simple. Oh my God! Look was. at this, y'all. Everybody, long take long a circle. take a look at this. This is uh, look simple home entity enclosed for bids. 
uh, oh identifiable God. matters. A uh, matter? Habits and wares. Oh my gosh. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's got some Cyrillic. It's got some. Uh, it's got a know. word. It's got a bad word. Is that in Chinese? There. Is that look, Chinese? Look at, the, look at the second to last line before the par the, the parenthesis waved engineer. Oh. <laughs> there's also a there's also a B word in there. Yes, there is. Oh, that's yeah. what you're saying. There it is. Waved engineer. Look uh -huh. at that. That seems unusual. Uh, you yeah. know, I know this game. So this is the game where you you close your eyes and you look at it, and the first four words that jump out at you, that's like your 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 future for the year, right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all seen that meme? <laughs> oh my god, that is too funny. So knocking uh, card club. I mean, there's a what is this? Uh, what's this thing right here? The Mac, Max, Max, Max is that, so, so if we if we is were that actually, German? if we were actually looking at this through the through the one where we could see what the tokens actually were, you would see that probably M A was one token, X U N was another token, yeah. F I T was another token. It's not picking words; it's picking tokens. Tokens. Yeah, and, and it's trying to make sense in the top wow. right where it says chat. If you go to legacy completion and you want to show this because this is actually going away, I think it's going away in about six months. This thing is when they, they have said that they're not going to support it anymore. Um, in the very top right, you see where it says chat. Oh, yeah, you want to copy the whole prompt? No, 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 I've got that uh over on my other thing, space um station. You know me, I'm a space, I'm a I'm gonna science fight, fiction fight. go yeah all right so we're all right how about, how about using quantum based technology instead of steam based mm. where is it steam -based. space station oh, using quantum, quantum. Based. um quantum uh let's use uh dark Nuclear. energy <laughs> dark, dark energy based there we go. why why dark energy? Because nobody knows what dark energy is. Amen but, on that. I mean, you, you can kind of you can kind of define a quantum. Uh, mm -hmm. You can you get you know that actually to be honest with you, I don't understand how quantum ha would have to deal with uh, faster than life travel because they're like bits and small things. And but also, you know, also add, add <laughs> uh, change intricate clockwork to molecular to molecular machines. Ooh! Nanotechnology, and oh yeah, just add nanotechnology. That'll work. Molecular machines. Yeah, molecular machines. It is. All right. I was like, but Let's... instead of doing this in this one, do you want to do it in the completion? Because we can. I'll show you how you can turn on so you can see the percentages of the tokens it selected. Yeah. Well, what? 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 Yeah. what ball. So copy, copy that. that. Copy. Okay, so the top right where it says mode and it's chat. Top right, yep. Right. It drop, it's a drop down. Choose completion legacy. Okay. Now, this is only going to be able to give you DaVinci 3, which is the model that came out before 3.5, but he's actually pretty good. There's still a lot of like PseudoWrite, for example, that uses DaVinci 3. So go ahead and paste and, your prompt in there. And then yep. the, uh, and you what about the high. temperature? Okay, so and now temperature is 1.8. Change your top P to 0 0.6. No, no, no. I thought we wanted to see the chaos first. Oh, you want to see chaos first. Okay. Chaos first. So scroll all the way to the bottom on that right side for me. Yeah, you're missing the bottom. Yeah. And at the no very bottom, it'll say show percentages and you'll say full. Or all of them or something. Full yeah, spectrum. Full, full spectrum. There you go. Now, when you run it now, it's going to write, but it's going to color code them. And when you hover over the tokens, it'll show you the percentages. Of what was chosen. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. Uh, molecular yeah. machine. And it's so also machine. notice at the bottom, right now at the bottom right, you're submitting 33 tokens. Yep. Where is it? It's in red. Bottom right. Oh, and you have to bring down your max, your max uh, output because DaVinci 3 can only do 2,048. So you'll need to bring that down to like 1,000 tokens. Okay. Yeah, it was it was a baby model compared to 3.5. So it's context window is only 2048 tokens. Well, ah, uh, but not bad for a model. Okay, you're close like enough. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. For a second, there, I was like, do I have to be anal about it? No, just uh, about. No. Now you'll notice they're all red because they were all basically the most lowest calculation possible. If you hover over one, it'll you can click on it and it'll show you the calculations and the tokens it considered. 
Oh, that's wow. what happens when you do temperature on the max. So oh my gosh! It's, it's always going to pick the the higher the temperature, the 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 the, the better chance it's going to pick one of the lower ones. So, so and that to choose something oh, in the middle. Wow. So now we're going to take our top P. So right now that one on top P means look at 100% of the results. And then the temperature setting means choose that bottom one, the, the most random one. So by limiting the field, it's not going to look at the bottom 60%. Correct, Leland? Yep. It's not going to look at the bottom 40%. Yeah, so so it's only going to look at it. It's, it's, it's going to essentially eliminate. This is, yeah. uh, so I was just, the way I found to describe this is this is like going to an amusement park and you have those amusement park rides. And as you as you get to the front of the line, they have that little stand that says you must be at least this tall to get on this ride, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's what Top P is doing. Top P is setting that line. It's, so the token must be at least this big to be able to be allowed in, or or in this case, it's popularity. Yeah. So so in order for the token to be considered, it has to be above the, uh, above the a certain level of popularity or likelihood to be become yep. next. So so this is eliminating the uh, this is eliminating the bot like the, the really weird choices and sticking to the the most likely choices. And then it's going to pick the most uh, most improbable from those. So that's how you select from the middle. Huh. <laughs> Which will also differentiate your text from the author next to you running the exact same prompt because most likely if they don't change any of their hyperparameters, they just keep their temperature low and they don't do anything with top P or anything, they're going to have a lot of words that are green, meaning they pick like the most common word. So by doing these little selections here, now you're making sure that your generation is even more unique than the author next to you using the exact same prompt because you're pulling from the middle. But Elizabeth, I don't understand. I thought that you just clicked a button and it just made everything <laughs> and it was perfect every time because apparently there is this rumor out there, especially during the strike, because, all right, so I, I love my writers. I love my writers. I love my writer. I love my writers in Hollywood. I love the, what they're doing. I think it's right. Uh, I think that if they don't do it, they're going to go poor and then we're going to get very poor written stuff and then okay. we won't want to watch things. And then the poor executives are going to go, I don't anybody want to watch anything. It's because they aren't getting good material. So I, I support the writers. I support everything they do. But they do not need to hate on AI like this. They don't need to hate on AI like this. That's my quick rant because it's going to help them. And if uh, there is a there is a phrase right now, y'all, if you you AI will not replace you, but AI uh, but people who know AI will probably replace you. So I've got a twist. On <laughs> I, I have a I have a better twist. I've been thinking about it. Ooh, uh oh, writer, go ahead, writer. AI, AI is not going to write better than you. But you could write better with AI. Ooh. Oh. So Girl, get, that's a t-shirt. I know. Like it's it's you know, if if we all wonder if if Gandalf showed up and said we were selected to go take the one ring to Mordor, or if Professor Xavier showed up and said, oh. You need to come to my school because you're a mutant. That's my we're example. Now, right we're there. now finding out who would have taken the call and said, Yes, I'm here for these superpowers. And it's hard and it's difficult. And with this great new powers comes great responsibility. And the right. people who'd be like, kill it with fire. It's like the people you hate in X-Men, in the X-Men movie who hate the mutants. It's like, well, you're kind of revealing yourself to be more in line with their idea. You're afraid because it's new. You're afraid because it's different. But we're here to tell you, you don't have to be afraid. It's literally just a dictionary slot machine. But in the it hand... Really is. In the hands of someone who's actually a gifted storyteller and stuff, it takes you to that next level. It, it speeds it up. It means that you never have to be blocked again. You never have an excuse to not work on your projects. And you can get 10x done. And our industry has desperately needed that shot in the arm to keep up against other media forms, video games, video. Uh, all of that is faster than writing books. But this is a way for the written word to stay. My daughter's generation, they're, they're reading on their phones like snaps. Uh, not just Snapchats, but like they're really into that serialized short fiction. Um, and in the hands of a master storyteller, this thing is amazing. 
You know, like my my son, I could not get my son to read a book for my life. And I live, I, I actually have a library of over a thousand books around me. Oh. And I, it wasn't until he hit high school and he was forced to read a book. And he was like, and then he found out that the book was, he could he get the book in electronic form on his phone. He's reading books in the freaking phone. I'm like, you're reading a book. He's like, yeah, this is good. I'm like, Okay. My my well, daughter turns you could it. Change, you could change the te- the size of the text. You could do whatever you want. My, I, I, have, I have that book. You can have the paper. No, no, no. I like I like this. Not, okay. My daughter is dyslexic, so she actually turns on um, open dyslexic font on her phone. So she puts all of her websites and stuff that she reads in a dyslexic uh, friendly font, which it makes it easier for her to read. And she also uses like the the text to speech to listen, like audiobooks. All of that is AI. Everything that your phone has been able to do to predict what you're going to text next or to read to you what an email said, all of that is natural language processors, which was the precursor to these large language models. So yeah. Dragon was predicting what the word would be compared to the other words it had already solved in the MP3 that it was transcribing, uh, at least for the last 12 years that I can recall. So mm-hmm. that's where this I is. I was a Dragon rider, very hardcore. I was Thank actually you. in the Facebook. I was a... I was I'm an Facebook. admin of that Facebook group because I did the how to train your dragon post in uh, 2014. That that was you. Yes. Hi, Elizabeth. Was excited by... <laughs> I've been I EMW guess, uh, for a long time. I've yeah, been on the cutting edge of the tech stuff. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. So, uh, and uh, just so y'all know, I mean, I she likes the low key on this stuff. She's really like big in the uh, talking to you about AI, but the talking about herself thing is not a thing. But me and Leland both agree that this this particular woman right here has literally caused all of the things that we have going on in AI to really have been uh, and, and writing to mm-hmm. have come to fruition because Elizabeth looked at a thing and her imagination has literally no bounds and she sees things that she thinks are obvious to everybody else. I do. They aren't, <laughs> Elizabeth. They aren't actually obvious to everyone else, but but uh, she sees things in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm gonna have to say right now that you not just a, not th- this is she is a very good example of what I think that a lot of you are. A lot of mm-hmm. people out there are imaginative abstractly imaginative don't understand how imagine you you're you come up with funny quips you're a funny person you uh you're quick on the this you have you always have an idea about something you're yep. working in a corporate environment and you're in the marketing department and you always wanted to write a book this or or write anything or contribute to something come over to all of uh, come over and learn from mm-hmm. The Future Fiction Academy, from the nerdy novelists, from all of the resources that you can in order to make your life more, make your life better, make the world better because you thought up something that changed someone's life. I mean, there are people who probably are so grateful to Leland for the types of books that he writes. Just mm-hmm. the types of books, like if, if if he didn't write those books, they wouldn't have this release. You know, it's like the big movie, the 18 movie buildup to Avengers Endgame, and you see the thing and it's and and you watch and you hear a uh, cap on your left and you <laughs> lose your mind. That's the sort of thing that I'm talking about. I think that everyone could contribute. Am I am I crazy, y'all? Or is it no, me? No. I, I think that everyone could contribute to exactly the future that we want to see. And the only way to do that is through entertainment. I'm serious. Yep. It really is. You and- think it's books. You think, I mean, you think it's... Uh, um, uh, going to school, you think it's learning things. It's it's entertainment. It's the thing that gets you jazzed, and then you find out that there's deeper meaning to that thing that you're jazzed about. Mm-hmm. AI is becoming a great equalizer too for accessibility in our industry. Steph Pajonas, another one of our founders, she was on Joanna Penn's podcast talking about writing Ooh. with AI when you have a disability. So if you're dyslexic, 
if you maybe have chronic pain or you have, there's a, a lot of people who are neuro. Wasn't that an issue with you at some point? Yeah, I have, I deal with chronic pain to where I can't be at the computer for longer than about two to three hours a day, or I pay for it with pain in my neck. So, right. And it started, this it was one of the reasons why you started with dictation. I was 27 when my hand started going numb. Uh, and I went to the doctors and all that, and they did the same thing. I was a woman with issues and they basically just ignored it and they were like well there's no pain well, the pain came when i was like 31 so uh i used to sleep with like peas bags of peas and stuff on my neck and uh i i do therapies for it i do physical therapy for it you know but i haven't had surgery or anything because i don't know anyone who's been like let me tell you how awesome my back surgery was <laughs> yeah no kidding no that doesn't exist uh but the other thing is those of us who are neurodivergent we're finally finding processes and stuff that go as fast as we think like I can pop off and do a bunch of different projects and things like that. Um, I can now set it, it's running, and then I'm going to go do a task or whatever. And now I'm back and able to hyper-focus those 15, 20 minutes where I'm now going to edit the stuff. It's still my right. idea. I still prompt it. And believe me, I prompt the life out of this AI. I get it down to the specific, like, these are the parameters you have to go through. We did some very basic prompts today, but we also showed a big difference just between describe a rosebed and describe a rosebed, Victorian, steampunk, and all that. So, right. And you've seen some of ML Miragold's prompts, and it's like, here's all right. the story brief. <laughs> right. And, well, and, but, all right. Um, Jason gave a great example uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. He goes, uh, he's like, yeah, I wrote 1,500 words so that I could get uh, 4,000 or 3,000 words. Um, yep. and they, everyone's uh, had his example was that I'm sure you think that that was overkill, but it wasn't, no. <laughs> it wasn't, you're, you're trying to produce almost, uh, finished prose. Your, your, your whole idea is to, when you get to the edit part, that there is a minimal amount of time that you are actually refining those pros. You're looking at it and you're seeing if the story is actually singing to you. If it's not, yeah. then you move stuff around and you do things and you work through your process. Uh, I don't know if, um, uh, how do you, all right. So, um, all right. So here's mine. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I often will dictate all of my beats my yeah. ideas, the idea of exactly how I want my beats. Then I will break them down by number. And you then I that. will, yes, I mean, me personally, I don't, yeah. I dictate them from my mind. And then I take those same beats and I put them into either chat GPT or Claude. And I ask them, I ask that, um, uh, those programs to then in turn enrich the beats to make sure that there are a lot of like details that maybe I might have missed, you know, expounding on the moments. And then I have it run the beats either in chat GPT or pseudo write or whatever. Actually, pseudo write is usually what I usually use. And then I run all of my beats uh, and get all of my stuff. And as I'm going one by one, I'm working the 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 two beat stride and then i go and edit add what i need to and then it'll keep going and then as i get all, through that whole thing i will take it out of pseudo uh out of that and put it into the main document and then i will highlight the whole thing and listen to it on my apple speech i changed my speech siri speecher from this other person to a very nice black man <laughs> who has an upbeat voice and it really, you know, so that's a suggestion. If you're an Apple person, there is a place in your, um, in your settings to go to voices and you can change your voice to an Italian, I mean, to a, uh, uh, Irish person, a black person, a white person, a, uh, person with a Northern accent, a, a Southern, British person. You know, it sounds like yeah, British, Ritchie. right. You can, and it, <laughs> It, you know, depending on, yes, I bet you do that for your, uh, your books so that you can get an idea of the way that the speech patterns are going for the British speaker. Yeah, yeah that's before, probably before cool. Theory, I would use natural reader, which is a, which is a thing online. And now there's 11 labs too. I mean, there's just no shortage of AI. I don't tools. know what the pricing scheme of 11 labs is. I keep it's, wanting it's to. It's not bad if you stay in the middle tier, which is the same for everybody. Yeah, all oh, okay. these tools are about like 15, 20 bucks to get started with. And yeah. then it's kind of it's kind of like the drug dealer. Like you get but, started with it. It's like, okay. like, I mean, just, just the default Apple reader on my Mac. I mean, I yeah. use that like I, I'll just have it read the text to me because mm -hmm. you hear like yeah. da, 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 oh that 
that was that was a painful sentence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I yes. Go fix that, right? But 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 you hear more mistakes than you see. Yeah. Yeah. Flat out. I uh, um, I, then, I I think that uh, the the picture that it builds in my because i have a furtive imagination you know you know what i mean you, when you have a furtive imagination which is actually like you know like having long fingers or big eyelashes it's a trait that you have and furtiveness actually causes me to see the thing unfold in front of my in my brain yeah, as i'm listening to it. like a movie Yes, yes, very much, very much. And uh, it makes it better, actually, because then you know for a fact that it either sucks or it doesn't, because you can tell that it sucks. If it sucks inside of, like, monotony sort of bland talking, then you really probably should go back and look at it again, you know? So uh, but if it pops and you're just listening to it and it's just popping and it's a monotone voice that does that, that means it's working. That means it's I mean, really yeah. working. Then you get then you get a real you get a real voice actor to come in and do your audiobook for you. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's why I do that. That's it's one of the main reasons why I read it myself, because I keep thinking to myself, well, I, you know, I kind of got this skill. <laughs> I went to school for it the whole ah, nine yards. Yeah, I loved your reading of your prompts earlier. They were there. That was yeah. quite good. Thank so, you. Thank you. Ikello, back to the dictation thing. Have you no, please, please. having we're we're playing in uh FFA with our Rexy tool, which is the Scrivener of Prompt Engineering. That's what the tool is going right. to be. Here we go. Here we go. Um, <laughs> we call this concept the story so far. And what we mean by that is we know that these bigger models, Claude, 16K, GPT, 3.5, they can handle larger amounts of tokens than what, say, a tool like Story Engine will actually let us read it. You know how Story Engine does the chapters in silos? Yes. So if you are using Claude 2.0, which you can access through Open Router um, AP, uh, AI, which we integrate with. So even if you don't have a Claude API key, you can still use Claude uh, straight from the AI or API. Right. You can have like your last three chapters and then say continue in the same style as above and for the following beats and dictate that and click go. And it'll just write the next scene and it'll stay with the style of what you previously had written, which could save you some time. And that works because that's how those things are trained. Those things yes. are trained with, here's my inputs, here's my expected outputs. You figure out how to get from A to B and then and then repeat that a million times, right? So the origin of beats in Story Engine, okay? That is the original prompting queens for FFA. We were in January solving the problem of what it, how do we go from chapter to, to like a chapter outline to an actual chapter written. And we were working with 3.5. GPT-4 wasn't even out yet, y'all. And not 3.5, 16K. We're talking 3.5 with 4,000 tokens. Yep. And so there was no way to go, here's my previous chapter, match this style and write these things. And so that's why we came up with the interstitial step, which was originally called commands, because it wasn't just a beat. It was information about the plot point, And then it was another... Uh, piece of information of how to yeah, write Yeah, I was going to say bracketed or something, right? Yeah. Well, you could use brackets, but but commands were the the origin for the beats that's in Story Engine. Now, Story Engine started to get developed on in March and April of this year, and as that happened, literally like GPT-4 dropped and then we got like Claude the bigger context dropped and everything like that. However, Story Engine still does not do the full context window of uh the the models and i understand why like they they built their their way and everything i think that the new pseudo right 2.0 is going to have those bigger contexts i've gotten to see some things coming down the pipeline that they're doing um and that they've shared with other users too who, who who help test things for them so they are bringing tools that are going to talk to the whole story um but there is that capability now in claude chat and people know this or with code interpreter which gpt4 has or because or you can also turn plugins on, but don't turn a plugin on on your GPT-4, and you can get the 32k context um, because the plugins have it automatically. Oh, you have a kitty! Oh, now we've gone the cat. Okay. Okay, you look a little bit like a supervillain. I'm not gonna lie. Like, like I'm waiting <laughs> to say, like, the money better be in the bag. <laughs> say hello. The, hello, hello. The, the this is great. Yeah, the cat's like, where's the tuna? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's give me the snack. Cat. 
at any rate, the studio since okay. Came but, right. out, uh, I think we finally launched that thing in May of this year. It really kind of like went out to the masses. It was in beta for all of a April and I was doing YouTube videos and stuff on it. Um, since then, I know since then it is freaking September. Since then we've had 100 K context drop out drop. We've had 32,000 word context drop. There are some other models. Um, Mosaic has a model that's like 65,000 tokens. I expect within the next six months, we're going to have llamas and stuff that have bigger context windows. Uh, some of the not safe for work models like Nancer's Weaver already has a 12,000 token uh, context window, meaning it can read up to 10,000 words. And that, that model, um, well, Mithromax, I know off the top of my head, has an 8,000 token one. If you ran 300,000 tokens in Mithromax right. by Griff, it would cost you 75 cents. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like yeah. less than a dollar. Less than a dollar. Because the charge for it is 0. 0.00014, 1, 8, or 00188. So, yeah. And that's how many tokens? 300,000 tokens. So it's 0. 0.00188. Or 75 for cents. Yeah, because it's 0. 0.00188. I'm sorry, thousand. honey. I just, I, I had, you had to say that to me twice because I was like. I know. We were doing the math and we were like going, wait, wait, wait. Is that right? Is that right? Can be so, right. So 300,000 words divided by 750 because you get about 750 for every Jesus. thousand tokens. So you have to figure that out. So it's 400 okay. instances, 400 times 0. 0.00188 is 75 cents. Okay. So, um, yeah. so we're going to be able to do this affordably, cheaply, uh, quickly, uh, thoughtfully, um, mm -hmm. we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to make our dreams come true. Full control. Make the things that we, so, so, all right. So here's the context. Rexy is sure. Uh, Rexy is, uh, is Elizabeth's way of, uh, explaining to a person that they are the master uh, to, to, to not be a T-Rex means to, not have your hands popped right up against your chest <laughs> and you can't seem to get them to the keyboard. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> you can't get them to the keyboard. You can't get them to the keyboard. <laughs> you, can't, you can't hit a button on the keyboard to start up your dictation. So none of that can happen. If that happens and you're a T-Rex and you're not contributing to your own, as a matter of fact, I matrid this specificity. That's mm -hmm. all we want. All we want you to do is be specific. Yes. Be specific. You know your story. Are you a writer or are you not? If you're not a writer and you're just here because you think you can spin up some stuff real quick and you're not wanting to put any effort for it, you are probably in the wrong place. This is a place for active thinkers, people who are contributing to the actual process that is called writing. So... That's the difference, I think. That's the difference between what I think people think we're doing and what we're actually doing is yeah, we I think are it's storytelling. Yeah, I think storytelling because people yeah. get are getting really persnickety and, and kind of like, you know, frustrated about you can't call yourself a writer if you don't right. write your words. Well, I hate to break it to you, but I wasn't writing my words since 2015 when I started using Dragon Dictation. I would literally dictate 20 minutes and let it process and then I would clean it up. That was my entire process for 25 books. And I've made over a quarter of a million dollars just on the Amazon store alone. So people can't tell me that my writing sucks or that AI, I had AI in three books since December of 2021. One of those books has made over $10,000 in the first 30 days. So it's, it's like when people are like, what reader would want to read that? I hate to break it to them. They don't care how <laughs> we write the books. They just care if you tell a good story. That's it. Yeah, if, All right. if, if the book tells a picture, it creates a picture in their mind and sets them escape from the real world, they're in. That's the, and But you have to have good writing to make that happen. And I told my right. readers I was using AI. And you want to know what they cared about? Because I said, listen, some authors are running around. They're attacking me on Twitter right now. I just want to let you warn. I didn't want you guys to get into this. Don't When's get into this. When's the next book coming? When's the next yeah, book coming? Yeah, it was. 
number one, we'll just let you write faster. And I said, yes. And I said, cool. And then I said, number two, who are these people bothering you? We will go take care of them. I said, no, 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 no. My relationship don't. with my readers has always been, I write as fast as I can because that's how I finish projects. That's why I haven't finished a book in about a year because I got busy with the AI stuff and teaching it and everything like that. That Me I too. have to finish all of my books. Like one of my best selling books, I wrote in five days. And that's because that's how I work. But how I work is not the same as how somebody else works. And so we can't right. prescribe to each other, only a good book takes a year to write. Maybe that's true for one author, but another author, if they take a year, they can't finish it. And I'm in that camp. Right. So. Yeah. I, I, I think that uh, the long, there's a reason why uh, November uh, is the one month that you are given to write those 50,000 words. Nano Rhymer. Because, yep, because if you, and that was, that's how I wrote my first novel mm -hmm. that nobody has ever seen. That's <laughs> how I wrote my first novel was because I, I was, I was compelled to do it in a very constrained amount of time. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, you, you got a lot of stuff to teach over at the Future Fiction Academy. We're not just uh, teaching from, how to write with AI. We teach publishing. We teach 11 labs. We teach book brush. We teach marketing, branding. I mean, it's a full, like if you want to make a career, we have literally instructors who have been making a career out of selling books and that's who teaches the classes. Yep. And all of the enhancements that you can get through AI through this entire process. Mm -hmm. I am um, so grateful, you two. I I um Thank you. It's the virtual I, it, it, well, this is we need conversations like this. We mm -hmm. need people to see conversations like this. And we need uh we need positivity when it comes to AI writing because there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing. It's it's a perception or a actually uh in a lot of a lot of ways, just ball face lies. People don't. People are lying about what we do and how we do it, or they're just mad. Or this is. I remember getting a comment on a video. Really, the only negative comment I've really gotten, uh, where he he apparently watched the whole video because he referenced something at the very end of the video, and uh, and then he says, "This isn't writing." Yep. Right. I've had a, a, you're not really writing. Well, you know what? That's Nunya. That's Nunya business. Yep. Uh, if you don't think I'm really writing, then the great thing about America and all of the other places <laughs> that you can purchase things is that you can choose to not purchase my material. If you think that we are not doing things the way that you want it done, then you should go seek out those authors who are very happy to write one book every six months and you will get what you get. Yeah. I will well, give my readers. Me. I mean, <laughs> we, you, you heard me. I, I want to, I want to change this entire paradigm. I want to create television series that are actually just episodic books that are novellas and I want to put them out once a week. I want to yeah. start, I want to do pilots. I want to have, people in my stable i want to have people bring me ideas and say i was like all right let's try that let's try that and we'll put a put a quick book out and do some quick art get it out there and see uh, the speed and listen, if these are, if it's these the are short, speed if these are i have short. a detective series for you if you want to do a tv show amazon yeah. amazon has an entire category for that um that is short reads and it goes based off of how many page numbers they are so basically if it's like 40 to 60 pages that's a 90 minute short read and the science fiction and fantasy section on that, um, not too competitive. Like you just have to be ranked higher than 121,000 on the paid Kindle store to be on the bestseller list. Wow, not a problem for me. Yeah, I mean, and it, 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 and with the visuals that you mm -hmm. can create and things like Mid Journey and Dolly and well, not Dolly. Check out uh, Playground. Leah, let's go, Le Leonardo. Check out Playground AI. It's stable diffusion with like just there's like a one minute video on it and i i'm like in love with it because it's every tool that you want in a like 
like has it I'm gotten better? Because I used to use it a long time ago, and they had to have a lot of negative prompts and a lot of these prompts. Now everything's using. like presets. It's it's grown up. I was a mid journey girl, and I just canceled my mid journey. Mm. So, you know, oh, I know, I know for playground AI. I did, I did do the thing. I'm but, keeping mid journey. I'm keeping like the low level mid journey, just because like I don't know who's gonna win this this fight. But um, because you I, know they keep coming out with different i mean it's mid journey is whew. and and that's the key like get your foot in the door on these these different startups and stuff get like the low level account so you get grandfathered in because right. we don't know which one's going to win yeah we don't know which one's going to win all I've right a large so, collection of accounts yes <laughs> all right leland uh leland uh what uh what is the one thing that you would tell the brand spanking new person who is just who had ran across this podcast. What is that one thing that you would tell them about AI positive thing that you could tell them to encourage them to use AI? Uh, could you give me that? Like, like just like your, your elevator pitch for using AI the way that the way that we use it. Um, I would say that the, 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 the whole point of the AI is that it, it provides you with uh, a large, like an infinite library of ideas and concepts that you can use for your muse. You can ask it for a list of almost anything and find something that sparks your imagination. Because that's what I do quite frequently it's like when i'm writing my books i'll be like oh i need something to happen here or i need a tool or i need a a crime or i need i need a list of bars or something like that oh like, my so gosh like, yeah you know, just you know give me a list of 10 bars in in london in 1930 uh and then yeah sure so i'm writing fiction so it's okay if they're not real and yeah. I, get, I get a list and a description and i'm like okay uh give me uh give me a five five Give me, you know, describe the wait staff for me. Okay, no, give me a, give me a, give me a description for a real snap, you know, for a real pucker, pucker faced Irish, you know, bartender or something, right? And it lets me like get over that moment where I'm, I, 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 I'm writing. I'm like, I need, I, yeah, which would normally stop me for a few days, but now like it's like a few days. That's crazy. A few days, y'all. Am I right? Because yeah, I would have to go think about it. I have to go try and come up with some ideas. And maybe I have to go talk to some people to try and get some get some stuff. But the the AI is there twenty four seven. I mean, I can I whenever whenever I get this idea, it's like I I want to do this. And if I'm working on it at eleven p.m. at night, I can ask the question. If I'm working on it at seven a.m. in the morning, I can ask the question. If I just happen to be taking a break during lunch, I can ask the question. <laughs> come on. I mean, it's like it it's one of those things where you. You you take like I take it for granted now that I can just go into the office at, you know, three in the morning when I wake up for to get ready to go to work uh, at Starbucks and <laughs> I can sit down for 10, 15 minutes and actually get some actual writing done before I go to work. And it gets my brain going for the whole day, for the whole yeah. day. So that when I when I get done with my shift. I come home and I'm ready to write. I'm thinking about the thing that I generated. I'm thinking about the thing that is the story, the actual story that I want to tell. And then I, because am I right or am I wrong, y'all? Your well can run empty. You oh, yeah. can have a moment. You can have a bad moment where you're like, uh, you've hit, it, and it's not so. This whole thing, the whole idea of writer's block I, is completely done now. It's a it's a past tense sort of thing. It's not a real thing anymore because you have so many tools, so many mechanisms. So I hope that. And, all right. So here, that's that's uh, his answer to that. Elizabeth, we're going to end with you telling <laughs> us about why and how AI could benefit especially the new writer the person who doesn't doesn't know feels like they have imagination that they could write something but literally have never taken a class or have yeah. any skills or anything what do you think 
So I like to say everything old is new again, especially with AI. So the vast majority of the training sets was on public domain content, which is my jam. I write Jane Austen fan fiction for a living. So I'm all about the public domain. So when it read all of those textbooks that were in the public domain and things like that about writing, the craft of writing, a lot of the intricacies that we talk about, the craft talk of different plot structures, um, different vocabulary words, such as like writing a transition, going from one scene to the next scene, or um, your dialogue or anything like that, all of that is in the training sets. You can use AI to help you beef up your literary education. Everything old is new again. So if you have your writing and you've, for example, one of the things that new writers often do is they, they change point of view. And what that means is you might be starting to talk, um, I opened the door, I ate my lunch, uh, Sally came in the room, she said this, and then you're using your name, Elizabeth said this back. You've just switched point of views from first person to third person. Um, that's a really common mistake that new authors make. I made it myself. I got uh, banned from a fan fiction site, actually. That was my first rejection was because I was switching points of views. The AI can help you with that. It can help teach you, number one, what is shifting point of view or what it means to write a transition or what it means to change your dialogue. So it's a dialect of where the character would be. All of these different terms and concepts that um, many of us have spent countless hours or money student loans on learning this material, just like AI is helping people learn quantum physics and being their tutor or whatever, you can use AI to be your creative writing tutor. And like I say, the AI is not going to write better than you, but you could be a better writer with AI. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and with that, we are finished, but not really. Two weeks from now, we'll have yet another set of guests, maybe even some other people who aren't Elizabeth and Leland from the Future Fiction Academy. You never know. And mm -hmm. I had Marigold. She was my first guest ever on this oh. podcast. And oh, my gosh. My soul was so filled after that conversation with that woman. It was so awesome. And so, and that came out, uh, actually, I released that this morning. And uh, while, and I'm recording this, uh, I believe, uh, or Tuesday, uh, September 5th. So mm -hmm. it, it it may come out in the next couple of weeks. It may, we're, 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 they're working on Rexy. Rexy is their new platform for actual writing of, prose and creating things and making story from wholesale story from scratch. And they've been working on this project for a very long time. And she's been, she's been like on her channel, uh, kind of saying Rexy here, Rexy there, but not really. She's like very excited about possibly releasing it. And when it comes out, I may very well have one of the teachers back on here so that we can kind of go through how you use this wonderful new project. I mean, product. It's mm -hmm. I'm, I'm super excited. I, I, I there, there are because of what's happening in the AI industry and the AI writing industry, there are several people building actual programs right now to compete directly with PseudoWrite. So I'm glad PseudoWrite is keeping up with the Joneses because this is going to be a very, very uh, big, big sort of um, uh, niche that we are hopefully filling in a very profound way because this is exciting, y'all. This is yeah. Our tool doesn't completely compete with Cedarite. They're building something that is um, more for kind of like the mass audience, whereas. Right. Rexy, which is really called Future Fiction Academy Story Technologies, it's the FAFAST system, the FAST system, but Rexy is the first tool in it. Uh, you know how like Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, that system was not made for amateur photographers and stuff like that. It was made for graphic design professionals. And that is what we are stepping out to do with Rexy. We are trying to make the prompting tool for creative writing professionals. So this is not the one where you're just going to click a couple of buttons and it's going to, you know, <laughs> hold your hand and stuff. No, no, no. This is 
you bring your secret sauce in. We have the prompt library right there for you to put your stuff in and you can change the prompt library on the fly. Imagine if you could change the back end of PseudoWrite Story Engine or the other things, the other prompting that you can't see, the invisible prompting that's happening. That's what Rexy gives you the power to do. And that's not something that the hobbyist writer or anything like that is going to be interested in doing, nor are they going to be technical enough to do it. So this but is people where who are actually... serious about building their IP, building yeah, big IP, building big universe. Building your IP. And every time you click the button, it does your API call, and then it writes it right to your notion. You no longer have to copy and paste. So you can just be in flow which when I try to explain that to a developer, they're like, what, what, what do you mean? I'm like, no, I need to stay in flow when I'm working with AI. And the second I've got to click and highlight and take it somewhere else and come back, I'm out of flow. But with Rexy, you can get a completion, save it to, save, click a button and save it and run your next prompt. And it's reading that completion to do your next step. So you know how you're copying and pasting your super prompt pieces? No more. Yeah. Your super prompt so is preloaded. Be and you just click buttons and you say, write chapter one, write scene one, write scene two, write scene three. Y'all, I keep trying to wrap this daggone thing up. And <laughs> we'll come listen, back. We'll I'm, be back. I, well, I, you know, yeah, I, I, like I, I try to keep them like an hour and a half, but God bless. Is this good or is this good, y'all? We'll come, come back. On. This we'll come is back like... super stable and we'll give you the exclusive. You'll get it. Yes, I, I'm telling you, you are, I cannot wait for all of you to play with the tool. Yeah, we've been, everyone's been playing. We've been playing with so much stuff in the background. I have other things that I've been playing with that uh, mm -hmm. I, that, I mean, it's, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this has been Elizabeth Ann Warren and Leland Arstra. Arstra. No, okay. okay, I gotta Arstra? stop. You just called me Elizabeth Warren, which I love Elizabeth gotcha. Warren. But uh, we'll just stick with EAW. It's okay. This is why you can edit it. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann West. You know why? You know what? I've been, uh, I, uh, I made it through all of, uh, I made it through uh, all of my videos for the first like four weeks and I would reference you and stuff like that. And then somewhere in the middle, I was watching a video and I called you. Warren. <laughs> Warren. I mean, there's worse people. I love Senator Warren. She's amazing. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, maybe I'll just keep this in here so that everybody knows everything's real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I, I'm so, I apologize about that. I okay. really work hard so that I don't call you. That's why one of the reasons why I call you EAW because it's you, 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 your names are no. so close with the one. Uh, E-dub. E-dub. Ooh. E -dub. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Oh, e no. Stick with the E-dub. E -dub. No, that's how we're going. All and right, it's, that's it's, how we're it's going Leland Archer. We doing it like that, girl. Yeah. You call we call you E dub. E dub. E dub dub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I <laughs> and with that, I wrap up one of the most exciting and dynamic conversations I've had about AI in a very long time. My name's Ikello Herod. This is the future of fiction podcast i so still love saying that the future of fiction podcast and i want you to like subscribe and if you would do me a favor hit the notification bell because you know youtube my name is ikello harrod Bye bye have a good day and i will see you in the next video